Hey everyone, this is Steve Weintraub from Collider, and I'm at the Collider studio at the Kia Telluride Supper Suite at Sundance with filmmakers behind Happy Happy Joy Joy. Um, first, let me start by saying congratulations on the documentary. Thank you very much. Um, Appreciate it. What is it like for you guys being here in Park City? I mean, this has to be pretty crazy. Yeah, it's an amazing experience. I mean, this is our first feature, first feature doc, first time at Sundance. So it's been a little overwhelming, but it's uh, everybody has been so everybody's been so incredibly kind and supportive. So it's really been a great experience. Yeah. Uh, I know that uh, most people in, who are fans of Ren and Stimpy they know Happy Happy Joy Joy. But let's since there's a lot of people watching that might not be familiar, talk a little bit about the doc and what it's about. Sure. So. The, the doc is about Ren and Stimpy, which was this revolutionary cartoon that premiered on Nickelodeon. But what makes it so extraordinary is not only the artwork and the voice, I mean, it's just from a craft and artistic point of view, it's, it's really a work of art, but also it's incredibly subversive. And this happened, this aired long before Adult Swim. So if you look at Beavis and Butthead and South Park and anything on Adult Swim, it really had its genesis through Ren and Stimpy. Yeah, <laughs> we're one voice with that. Yeah, um, uh, one of the things that people might not realize, though, um, is and by the way, I learned I I know a lot about Ren and Stimpy, but I learned a lot actually watching your documentary that I had no idea about. Um, how much did you guys like? Th this must have been a really big learning experience too. Absolutely, yeah, it was a huge learning experience. Um, so I had never seen an episode until we started this documentary. And he had seen maybe one in college, um, probably half drunk. So uh, it was it was uh, it was a we yeah it was a completely eye opening <laughs> experience when we started to watch episodes to see what we were getting into. It's so interesting because for me, Ren and Stimpy is still like it's Ren and Stimpy, yeah. and it's amazing to me that nobody had thought to do a documentary on what the f happened right. until you, where did this idea like germinate from? Yeah, so uh, a friend of mine um, who's in the documentary named Todd White, he was friends with John Kay, the creator of Ren and Stimpy. So he, uh, I was shooting short docs at the time, just, you know, little things here and there. And he said, um, you need to do a doc on this guy because I know him and I can get you to interview with him. And he's a crazy dude and he did this crazy show. So I was like, all right, we'll set it up, you know. And um, it, it, it took a couple of years to get that to happen, but then – Ron, uh, the timing worked out that Ron was looking to do something sort of creative. And he said, do you have any ideas? Do, let's do a doc. So I said, well, all I got is this Ren and Stimpy thing. Like, I don't know much about it, but if you want to try to do that, we can do that. And he's like, all right. So we just went to our computers, and about an hour later, you know, we did some research, and an hour later, we're like, dude, we got we to gotta do this because nobody – there was a couple of little YouTube things that fans had done, but there was no definitive – when you when you realized we want to do a Ren and Stimpy doc, at what moment are you starting to freak out that maybe because once an idea gets put in the universe, it feels like other people pick yes. up on that idea. Yes. So were you all of a sudden like, wait a minute, like you know what I mean, like that urgency? Yeah, absolutely. Especially because you know '90s nostalgia is big right now. <clears throat> Excuse me, and and so inevitably, like you said, that once once the idea is out there in the ether, uh, uh, many other people seem to pick it up. It was just like the 25th anniversary of the show, so there was a sense of urgency. And you know, being our first film. I think the naivete uh, played into it because we actually shot for about six months before we approached Nickelodeon to get the rights, which is a really, <laughs> a really bad idea. Uh, it's a <laughs> terrible idea. Yes, yeah. awful. But um, to their credit, they um, said, look, as long as you don't disparage the network, uh, we are, you know, we will license the material. We don't want final cut, but we do want to see, the, you know, what you end up with. And I don't know if you know this, but we actually had two complete versions of the film. The first version was without John Kay, and it was a celebration of the, of the, um, the series of Ren and Stimpy. And it was done. It was a year and a half in the making. It was through post. And then four days later, the news broke about John Kay and the Me Too movement. And we freaked out. We were like, we now have a, a, a film that's toxic. Uh, who's going to watch a celebration when, you know, these accusations have been made against the creator? Uh, so we spent a couple weeks, got our bearings, and then um, now created the film that you see here. Did you, had you interviewed John, I think you had, interviewed John prior to the Oak? Okay. No, no. So he, 
Yeah, he refused, even with the introduction from Todd White, the artist that Chemo spoke of, John refused to be interviewed. I mean, we were after him for a year and a half. It wasn't until the accusations broke in BuzzFeed and elsewhere that he um, uh, decided and reached out to us through an intermediary and said, okay, maybe, maybe I'll sit down with you guys. And it still took another six months before we actually got him on camera. Because uh, I was going to say, I was... I, I watched the doc without knowing exactly where it was all going to go. Mm -hmm. And when I saw John on screen, I'm like, oh, wow, they really got him. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was a long process to get. It looks easy, but it, it took a <laughs> lot. I, I don't think it was easy. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? I, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, we spent a lot of time with him to get him to sit down, to get comfortable with us. We did a lot of UFC fight nights at his house. We did a lot of dinners, a lot of lunches just to get him to trust us, you know, and, and tell him what we really wanted to, to do with this doc. So... If I'm not mistaken, you did some Indiegogo financing for this. That's right. Did you try to do financing like on its own, or did you immediately realize, we, let's just do Indiegogo? Well, that's a good question. Uh, we started with Indiegogo, and then we had, like I said, that first version of the film. And then when we realized we had to do a completely new film, uh, I sold my house and got rid of my car, and here we are. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so you, you did everything you're not supposed to do on this movie. Correct. All in. All, yeah. yeah. yeah um, well, first of all, I'm pretty confident that it's, is it for sale here it, at the fest? It, it is. So Submarine's handling the sales rights, and I know they're talking to some folks. But I was going to say, I'm, I'm pretty confident you're going to sell this yeah. movie. Uh, in fact, I'm willing to wager, you know, uh, <laughs> my, you know what I mean. I'd yeah, really yeah, put money sure. on the line that you guys are selling this movie. Yeah. Because we really need to get Ron a car. <laughs> right. well, mostly because the, the, there's so much interest in Ren and Stimpy. Absolutely. And you guys made a really compelling doc that's thank you. really what, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, if the doc you. was shit, you'd be in trouble. Yeah, but absolutely. Like, you know, you guys did it. So, thank, thank you, you very know. much. Um, so talk a little bit about uh, how much, did you have a lot of stuff that ended up being on the cutting room floor <laughs> in terms of, because I would imagine you shot a lot Tons. of material. Yeah, we did like 53 interviews. Um, and there's just so much, I mean, we wanted to do a cut that was three and a half hours long, you know, but you just can't do that. And there's so much amazing material we have, but you just, you just have no choice. You have to move forward. And if it's not advancing the story, you just, you got to leave it where it is, but we will have DVD extras and a lot of that stuff will be on there. So there's a lot of stories being told, a lot of crazy stuff that happened at Spumco where they made Ren and Stimpy, um, stuff that we couldn't just put in because we had to sort of narrow our focus. I mean, the doc is already an hour and 40 minutes, so, um, but yeah, for DVD extras, it's going to be pretty, yeah. pretty well, you're, killer. You're talking to that many talented artists. You can imagine so many of them are great storytellers. You're just transfixed. And the first cut we did, just as um, our own director's cut, it was two and a half hours long, and we're like, oh, this is too long. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I, I was going to say, I am interested because so many of those people are so talented. Oh. I would imagine that they, I would imagine there's some great, as you said, great stories, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering like how much, like I can imagine how much stuff. Um, but 80 uh, hours of footage is yeah, what we cut down. Exactly. Uh, so I want to ask, uh, having done the question I got from Dave, who did the review, uh, having done in-depth interviews with John, uh, his crew, and Robin Bird, uh, how do you personally see the legacy of Ren and Stimpy? That's a really complicated question and something that we definitely wanted to leave open for the audience. Because here's, here's the tricky part, and, it, and it, we're seeing this across entertainment as these allegations and truths come out about various creators having done really terrible things, is that millions of people have been affected by the art. And, and we interviewed other fans that aren't in the documentary that would tell these incredibly compelling stories about, you know, the last time I saw my mom smile was when we were watching Ren and Stimpy together before she died of cancer. So to get somebody like that to just completely scrap and stop watching Ren and Stimpy, it's probably not gonna happen, you know? On the other side of that equation, you have people like Robin Bird and, and, and Others, not Robin was an extreme case for sure, but others that work with John and, and suffered abuse that had these, you know, uh, have these incredibly compelling stories and, and you can't help but feel for them. It's like, how do you balance that? And, and that's not necessarily a question that we wanted to answer. And it was really important for us in this documentary to present the facts and not give an opinion because we feel these days like every outlet gives you an opinion. You're either a CNN person or a Fox person. And, and, and we've kind of felt it, it leads to a little bit of an intellectual laziness. So we wanted to present the case from a neutral viewpoint and then have people make their own decisions. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and also addressing the separating the art from the artist. 
you know, that was a big thing for us. Some people can do it. Some people can't. And that's their choice. You know, um, so that's just something that we have to leave for people to, that, you know, you can't, I mean, if you grew up watching the show for years and years and you have all these memories, just to, you know, like Ron was saying, just to be able to just, oh, I can't stand that show anymore, you know, I, I don't know if it can be. It's the same thing with Michael Jackson's exactly. music. Exactly. There's, there's, there's a hundred, you know, yeah, it's just, there's, it's there's, so there's so many. much out there. That, and and like, time is another issue, you know, after time starts to pass, unfortunately, it just gets people like, nah, you know, they forget about things. Sure. You know, what, do you, obviously you two learned a lot about Ren and Stimpy while making this. What do you think, like, what are some of the things that really, really surprised you in terms of, you know, stuff that you learned about the making of the show or the behind the scenes? You know, it was, it was done during a time when digital was just coming. So everything was hand done. I mean, if you think of animation or, or filmmaking in general, it's 24 frames a second, right? And then however many seconds and minutes and hours. So they had a hand draw 24 frames a second. And you just look at the still frames, which you'll, you'll see a lot of the original artwork in the film, and, and, and just the amount of emotion and um, that, that is, is communicated through a simple line drawing is just extraordinary. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, just the amount of work that it took to get the show off the ground. Um, and, and a lot of the artists, uh, like Chris Riccardi, those guys would go off and then create music for the show. After doing, you know, 16 hours in an animation studio, or, you know, drawing, they'd go into a music studio and then write Happy Happy Joy Joy or write songs. Uh, just the passion that these guys had, um, the drive to do that, where most people are like, okay, I'm going to go home and crack a beer. These guys were like, no. You know, they just had so much care for what they were doing. So that, to me, just blew me away. I was like, wow, I couldn't yeah. believe how much, not only work, and they just they were just so committed, you know. It was just... Yeah, I wonder, especially after watching the doc, um, like, obviously, John, let's just say, went a little insane. And uh, I wonder if they had... Nowadays, they do less episodes, you know, like certain series. But you, you have to wonder, do you think if Nickelodeon had come back to them after that huge success and said, we just need like six more, do you think John, like after talking to people, would have still gone as crazy as he did? Or do you think that it was just the success and the pressure, no matter what it was going to be, would just do him in? You know, I think the show would have just kept getting bigger and bigger. I mean, it definitely, it, it, there was a lot of great episodes after John left, but the show really kind of tapered off in terms of popularity. And, you know, as many people told us, th this very well could have gone on for years, like The Simpsons. And how John would have reacted, it's really hard to say. I mean, you know, it, He's a perfectionist at yeah, heart. And he, I mean, just, he's a gnarly perfectionist. So yeah. um, that guy will not accept anything subpar, right. you know, so... It, it, it is, it's a tough, tough prediction on that. Yeah. I don't know. And as somebody said, you know, it probably would have been better as specials, like you said, like six episodes a year, as opposed to trying to force him to deliver 20 or however many he ultimately had to deliver. Yeah, it's interesting because I think that, listen, I give him a lot of credit for putting together such an all-star team of animators. Oh, incredible. All the people that worked on it and, you know, and his inventiveness of doing created by, storyboards right. by, giving the proper credit to people. That's you know, right. he, he literally changed everything in terms right. of that came after. That's, that's right. I mean, you didn't see that created by credit. You didn't see cartoons as an auteur medium uh, for years. I mean, it was back in the Bob Clampett, Warner Brothers, 40s era. But for that, you know, what, 40 years, 50 years, you didn't see that. And then... As he broke down that barrier, you're starting to see, you know, the South Parks and the Mike Judges for Beavis and Butthead, etc. Um, I have to ask, of course, you. When did you finish? We finished. Uh, well, we finished cutting about th what three months ago or so, and then finished fairly quickly after that. But in terms of shooting, we were done shooting about a year ago, I would say. I meant when was the last time you worked on the movie? So like three months ago. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's that's about right. So um, after you took a, like a few days, and you know, uh, mm -hmm. have you even started thinking about what's our next doc, or is it? Yeah, we, gotta, you, or, yeah. Or is, yeah, we were thinking about that like a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, so yeah, okay, exactly. are you are you already? Can you share? Or are you keeping it private? Uh, you know, at this point, we have to keep it private because it's um, it's more celebrity based with. Uh, people that are two people in particular they're very well known that have these extraordinary stories above and beyond what their public image is so we don't want to quite give that away yet I but don't blame you yeah. I would say though it, it will probably be a lot easier for you to now that you have this doc 
under your belt so you can be like, well, check this out. Yeah, you right. Know? And yeah. it's like, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was really difficult to get those initial interviews because we had never done a doc before. And it was like calling people up and saying, I know you went through this horrendous professional divorce, but will you tell a stranger about it on camera? Yeah. <laughs> Not just, easy. And, and just in general, learning the process of documentary yes. filmmaking, you know, we've learned so much. Yeah. Um, just what to do, what not to do, you know, that kind of thing. So just having that is already a, a huge leg up yeah. for the next one. On that note, I'm just going to say congrats on the documentary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. And I hope it sells tomorrow. Thank you very much. For Such real. a pleasure.